All hail to the Christ within. This is your obedient servant, Reverend George Latimer Knight, coming to you with this week's Sunday School lesson, December 13, 2020. And we're thanking God and praising God for another opportunity to come before you. I ask you to follow us, to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Father Hurley, and also to follow us on our other social media channels at Father Hurley uh, via Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook. Precious name, oh, how sweet hope of earth and joy. Of heaven, precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Amen. International subject this morning, called to be Emmanuel, UHSC subject, a blessing in disguise. Lesson text, Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. I don't want to focus uh, too deeply on on the verses, but uh, we'll just see how it goes. Amen. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I want to start this morning with the general theme in our... Uh, in our Universal Hatred Spiritual Church Association Sunday School book, this is where uh, I come from every Sunday. You can get in touch with me if you like a copy of our great Sunday School book, which is based on the uh, International Standard Lesson Series. Our general theme is a quote from President Jimmy Carter, who uh teaches Sunday school every Sunday and he's well into his 90s and he's been teaching Sunday school every Sunday uh, for decades now. He even has a, um, a Bible out where he, I can't remember what version the Bible it is, but he has a Bible where he is, you know, put commentary and so forth. Then you should look it up. He truly is a, a blessed man. And his quote says, we should live our lives as though Christ was coming this afternoon. How would you and I live if we felt the Christ was coming right now? If we really felt or believed that that God was, uh, I just say it like this: What if God was coming to dinner tonight? How would you act? Hallelujah! How would you conduct yourself? Surely you would clean up not only your home physically. You'd clean up mentally. You'd clean up spiritually immediately if you knew God was coming. So that's how we should live every day, as if Christ was coming this afternoon. Amen. That's a wonderful thought to have. Again, our international subject is called to be Emmanuel. And this lesson, uh, again, Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25, is dealing with when Joseph found out that Mary the mother of Jesus was pregnant. Let me just read uh, the first paragraph of, of the explanatory synopsis that I've written here. The society Mary and Joseph were raised in went by the Mosaic law. Courting or dating, we would call it, and engagement were sacred. I want to stop right there. In our society, we don't uh, look at uh, dating, courting, now people all we also say talking, talking to somebody. We don't see that as sacred today. Engagement was sacred. It was holy. Now, some of us may still hold true that marriage is holy and sacred. But in their day, in their culture, the whole process was holy. There was no uh, uh, hooking up or uh, friends of benefits and because... They saw the whole process as holy, coming into union with someone, even uh, attempting to, even considering coming into union with someone was for them a sacred and holy act. Go back to what Jimmy President Carter said. We should live our lives as though Christ was coming this afternoon. How will we conduct ourselves if every person 
we were in a relationship, romantic relationship, but if we were just talking to the person, how will we uh, uh, view things? How will we conduct ourselves differently if we looked at each of those uh, encounters, each of those relationships as though it were sacred and holy? What if we put it on the par of the holy un union of marriage? What if we put all those relationships on that par, I think we would approach it much differently. As a society, as individuals, we would approach it much differently if we looked at every single romantic relationship as though it were holy and sacred. You were not to have sex until marriage. Of course, we, we know that. So, when Mary came to Joseph pregnant, she was in violation of the law which was punishable by death. So now let's go into the lesson. I'm going to quickly read through the verses because I, I can't, I heard one minister, I can't remember his name offhand right now, but he was, uh, it's an old, you know, from some years back. And he said that nowadays you can't, even in church, you can't take for granted that people know, even no standard verses. You can't assume people know the Bible and know where you're coming from. And you're not referring to children, young people, even adults. You can't assume that they know the Bible, know the basic, you know, stories of the Bible. So again, our uh, lesson text is Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. The first outline is facing the news. That's Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on his wives when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, espoused means engaged. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. So when he found out that she was pregnant, as I forestated, they were not to have any sex. So he knew he didn't have sex with her. So he knew uh, something went on here. Something happened. And without any other prompting, he felt, well, I'm not going to expose her because he could have, if he had told the elders, if he had told the, the Sanhedrin, if he had told uh, the rabbi, the teachers, that she was pregnant, they could have stoned her to death according to the law. They could have stoned her to death. If he said, I didn't, I haven't touched her. I don't know what's going on here. But he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to go that route. So he was minded to put her away privately. In other words, he had a mind to hide, to hide her from everybody. And he just had to deal with it later. Second outline, seeing the big picture, Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 to 23. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into uh, this uh, about well, Jesus was Mary a virgin. Was it a virgin birth? I'll just give you, drop a name on you. Hilliel, H-I-L-L-E-L, Hilliel. Look it up. Amen. And then... Uh, Get in touch with me. We can have that conversation about if Mary was a virgin. Amen. I will say this. Yes, it was of the Holy Ghost. It was a holy act. Sex itself is not dirty. It's not dirty. It's the thoughts of our minds that make the act dirty. <laughs> oh, I'll leave that alone. Let's go to the third outline. Uh, accepting the call, Matthew chapter 1, verses 24 and 25. 
Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. So he did not have any relation. Joseph had no relation with Mary until after she gave birth. They got married and she gave birth. And then you know, after, you know, after you know, the period of time when she was able, then that's when they had uh, relations. He did not touch her until that time. So he went on to marry her anyway. Now, we're not told this in the, in the scripture, in the, in the verses, but we can take from that that basically Joseph uh, said or, or intimated that he had no relations. He had sex with her. So he was the father. That's what he put out there. That he was the father. You know, they, they you know, gave in to their you know, appetites and he got her pregnant. And that's just what everybody knew. That was the story. And he just covered her. Amen. But even, uh, uh, let me finish here, this first paragraph. Even before being instructed by the Spirit in his dream, Joseph loved Mary enough not to expose her. So he wasn't going to put her out there anyway. But then the angel of the Lord gave him the instruction, and he followed that instruction all up into he did name his son because he did accept him, Jesus. I want to read this next paragraph because I want to get to it. It's very important. This lesson also teaches us about knowing our child's purpose. Before bringing a child into the world, we should go to the spirit and plead for a vision of what good works God desires a child to do. Every uh, life is important. Every life has value. Every life has a purpose. That's At least that's how we should live. We should live as though everybody has a purpose. So when a child is on the way when the mother is pregnant. Yes, that child has a purpose. That child is coming for some good reason. That's how we should approach it. And as the parents, you ought to pray for the Spirit of God to reveal it to you or reveal some piece of it to you so that you can proceed accordingly. And when the parents aren't aware of these things, the elders of the church should be allowed to offer their spiritual insight. No child is a mistake, although some pregnancies are unplanned and come at a bad time for the parents. God is always on time. If God allows the child to be born, then we should know that God has a wonderful plan for the child. Let us love our children and raise them to appreciate the Christ within now, you would just see something as a blessing in disguise. Surely, children can, in many cases, be a blessing in disguise because, like I said, the child may not have been planned by the mother and father, but it was in the plan of Almighty God. I thank you for joining me this morning for this lesson and, I, and praying that you receive some, at least one good thought out of it that you can take with you on through the week. Uh, share this video with your friends, family, and followers. And I'm praying that you will join us again on next week for another wonderful and insightful Sunday School lesson. Uh, it is my design, at least at right now, to keep these videos under 15 minutes, which we are. And uh, we'll do that until the Spirit will lead us into a, a different format. And we're working on some different things of how to do this and how to expand it. So I love your feedback on some ideas of how we can do this because I don't want to make the videos too long where people won't watch them you know, throughout. So God bless you. I love you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.